This video is brought to you by Soundcore's new Liberty 2 Pro headphones. Stay till the end of the video to hear how you can get 20% off your purchase. There is no better feeling when you find a really dope underrated artist that nearly no one knows. You instantly become initiated into the group of people that get to say, I knew them before they got big. And as much as you want them to blow up, there's still a part of you that wants to keep them your little secret for as long as you can. This is the same feeling that I had with the singer Halsey. I found her music when I was only 14 years old and she had one EP out. She was this trendy underground artist that only if you were a fan of pop music you'd know her. Today, Halsey is undeniably one of the biggest female artists to come out of the 2010s era. She has countless hit records while at the same time dominates streaming platforms. To the disbelief of many, Halsey didn't just pop out of the air with millions of fans. She actually has one of the most depressing backstories on an artist I've done so far. In this video, I'm going to be covering the dark start to Halsey's career, her albums, and the unimaginable hate train that made the public eye see Halsey as nothing more than a joke. Let's get into it. Ashley Nicolette Frangipani, better known for her anagram Halsey, was born on September 29, 1994 in Edison, New Jersey. Her parents, Nicole and Chris, had her while they were just teenagers in high school. Halsey's mother is of Irish descent while her father is African American. She describes her biracial background as the reason to why her music taste is so unconventional. While in high school, Halsey was bullied and slut shamed severely by her peers. It got to the point that at age 17, she attempted to take her own life. She was later diagnosed with bipolar disorder, something her mom had been struggling with her whole life. When it came time to graduate from high school, Halsey was accepted to the Rhode Island School of Design. But after realizing she couldn't afford to go to college, she decided to drop out of school completely. Her parents, disagreeing with her decision to leave college, kicked her out of the house, and thus Halsey was left virtually homeless. Her telephone service had been cut off, and she'd been couch surfing between her grandma and her then stoner boyfriend. At age 17, Halsey created a Tumblr account under the Elias 17 Black, where she would post her poetry and renditions to popular songs. She became best known for her Hailer song, a song about the public relationship between Taylor Swift and Harry Styles. It was during this time that Halsey got invited to a house party. She made connections with some producers and after showing off videos of her singing, she was invited to their home studio to record something. She wrote the song Ghost and uploaded it on her SoundCloud. The result was the song blowing up with five labels at her door ready to sign her. Feeling they gave her the most creative control, she signed with Astral Works Records and released her debut EP, Room 93. Nearly a year later, Halsey released her debut album titled Badlands on August 28, 2015. The album contained a mix of alternative, dark wave, and synth pop. It was a conceptual album based on the dystopian society of Badlands. Many critics disliked the album for the lack of lyrical depth and failed generational anthems like New Americana. But you have to give credit where it's due. She was only 19 years old when she wrote the whole album. And for the demographic she was reaching, it worked well. Even I will admit, in my high school edgy days, definitely vibed with the aesthetic as well as the album. When Halsey released her debut, she was still considered a rising artist, due to the fact that she hadn't had one commercially successful single. It wasn't until her 2016 collaboration with the Chainsmokers on the track Closer that everyone became acquainted with who Halsey was. It was a pure pop collaboration and the radio absolutely loved it. They played it over and over and over again until the whole world was tired of hearing it. It was certified diamond and is currently the fourth most streamed song on Spotify. After completing the collaboration, Halsey dealt with a genre identity crisis. She was trying to be seen as this alternative indie rock star, but after the Chainsmokers collaboration, she hated the idea that she was only going to be seen as a mainstream pop artist. The thing is, I and a lot of her other fans had always considered her to be a pop star. Sure, she had some alternative tinges in her music, but that didn't take away from the fact that at the end of the day, she was in the genre of pop. After much speculation on the sound of her second album, 
Halsey released Hopeless Founding Kingdom on June 2nd, 2017. The album continues with the conceptual story of Badlands. The music was much more radio friendly and it was clear she was trying to get a wider audience. Collaborators on the project include rising star Lauren Haregi, the rapper Quavo, and DJ Kashmir Cat. Only a few weeks ago, Halsey released her latest project titled Maniac. This time the album is just Halsey. There's no conceptual story, no characters, it's written strictly from her point of view. Many critics have praised her versatility in the genres and collaborators on this project. From K-pop superstars BTS to country singer Alanis Morissette, she has crafted her most cohesive and strongest project yet. My personal favorites off the album are 3AM and I Hate Everybody. The public perception of Halsey is something that has taken a downhill turn. From the start of her career, many people believed she was inauthentic, from her Tumblr aesthetic to her singing voice. Everything she has said has in some form given her public backlash. Now, don't get me wrong, Halsey has said some controversial things that deserve some of that backlash. But for the most part, people who despise and hate Halsey do it because it's a trend and they think it makes them look cool. I think Halsey is an interesting artist. I think she's got a lot of potential, and even if that's the unpopular opinion, I'm excited to see where her career goes in the coming decade. With the Grammys just passing by, Soundcore wanted to team up with me to tell you guys about their new Liberty 2 Pro headphones. These headphones have been endorsed by 10 award-winning Grammy engineers, and Forbes even named them the True Wireless Champions. They've got Hear ID technology, which means when you open the Soundcore app, the app will automatically adjust key audio elements to give you the best listening experience. They also have great battery life, with up to 32 hours without the charging case and 8 hours with it. With 7 ear tips and 3 wing sizes, you'll be bound to find your perfect pair. From now till February 14th, you can get yours 20% off. Just head to the link in the description of this video.